Hello everyone. Welcome to our next session of Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q Blast. My name is Dr. Matt Alvin. I'm an incoming medical intern going into radiology. If you're ready to get that higher score on test day, I'm ready to help you get there. Let's get started. So for this question, we've got a 60-year-old woman, so an older woman, hospitalized for three weeks because of widely metastatic ovarian adenocarcinoma. Very, very bad news. So this, this patient's not doing well. So she's given this treatment with cytotoxic drugs for her adenocarcinoma, her cancer. And over the next several days, she gets a fever, not just any fever, this is a pretty high fever. Anytime you see that 40 degrees Celsius or above, you better be worrying. So we're gonna take some blood cultures, just as you would do on the wards. And we put the cultures at 6.5% sodium chloride on bile and esculin agar. That should be like, ding, 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 what does that mean? What are you thinking? What organism can grow in that? What does it grow? Gram-positive gamma hemolytic cocci. Again, similar to one of the other questions we, get, we did, you've gotta be able to recognize these bacteria, not only by their shape and size and their gram stain, but also what they grow in. Okay, so we've got a Kirby-Bauer test, which you guys should be familiar with trying to determine antibiotic resistance. It shows that the organism is vancomycin resistant. That is really bad. If you're resistant to vancomycin, that's one of the big guns. That's, that's some serious stuff you gotta be concerned about. Which of the following best describes the mechanism of action of vancomycin resistance in this organism? So it's not even asking what the organism is. It's not even asking how we treat this person. It's just asking, how does the organism resist vancomycin? What's the mechanism of action of that? This is basic pharmacology. What does vancomycin do and how can organisms resist it? That's your goal when you go to these answer choices. Choice A says acetylation of the antibiotic. B, altered binding to PBPs or penicillin binding proteins. C says beta lactamase production. D, we methylate the 23S RRNA binding site. Or E, we substitute the peptidoglycan D -ala -D -ala with D -ala -D lac Take a few moments and select what you think is the best answer. Okay, correct answer for this is choice E. We go from D-ALA, D-ALA to, D, to D-ALA, D-LAC, okay? That's our substitution. That's how we get the resistance. So the D-ALA to D-LAC. So some key points to know about vancomycin resistance. First, it's most likely caused by, what's the organism? Enterococci. So VRE is what you'll hear it referred to in the hospital setting, vancomycin-resistant enterococci. That you should recognize because you know enterococci, they're gram-positive, they're cocci, and notice what I have here, that they grow in 6.5% sodium chloride salt, and they hydrolyze esculin in the presence of bile. That's something that you don't see with other bacteria. That's why this has to jump in your mind. When you see it, you knew it's enterococci, vancomycin-resistant. What does vancomycin do? Got to know this for test day. Basic pharmacology binds diala diala terminus of cell wall precursors. It's prescribed so often in the hospital that this resistance can take place. So you as the future doctor, you got to know how does resistance happen? It happens because these organisms are able to replace diala diala in their cell walls with diala d lac. And so vancomycin can't bind as strongly. And what happens? They can resist vancomycin and stay alive and cause all this harm to the patient. So some high yield takeaways from this question, don't only, don't only know how vancomycin resistance develops, know about these other anti antimicrobial agents and how resistance can develop to them. So with our PBPs, our penicillins, or cephalosporins, we can produce, or excuse me, organisms can produce beta-lactamase and cleave these beta-lactam rings. With aminoglycosides, we think of acetylation. With chloramphenicol, we think of acetylation. With tetracyclines, we efflux them out of the cell. Sulfonamides, it's again, export out of the cell. And we talked about vancomycin today. A lot of pharmacology questions, okay? It's stuff that every, every up and coming doctor has to know what you have to know to take care of your patients. Great question, great job today. Thanks for joining me in this edition of Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q Blast. I'm Dr. Matt Alvin. Good luck with studying and I'll see you guys next time.